What's up guys, it's Cody here. Some of you may remember back in November 2015, I created a machine that calculated the player's horizontal rotation and saved it to a scoreboard value using 24 command blocks. When I realized just recently that people were still using my rotation calculator and still watching the video. Today I'm going to show you how to detect the player's rotation to the nearest degree using only 24 command blocks in vanilla Minecraft 1.8. I admit I cringed a little. So today I'm upgrading and re-releasing this for Minecraft 1.12 in function form. This version will calculate your vertical rotation as well. And while the old 1.8 version was technically multiplayer compatible, this will work even with several players standing in the exact same spot. In short, it's just better in every way. I'll begin by walking you through how to install and use this in your world, then for those who are interested, I'll explain exactly how this works. To install this, download the .zip file containing the functions from the web page here. You can find a link to this web page in the description to the video. Extract the .zip file and place the coder folder within your chosen world's functions folder. A quick way to get to your world folder is to select the world, click edit, and click open folder. Once you've pasted the coder folder into here, get back into Minecraft and load the world. Make sure cheats are enabled so you can run commands and type slash function, I'm going to use tab complete to speed this up, coder colon rot underscore calc forward slash install. The rotation calculator is now fully set up as you can see by this message in the chat. To calculate an entity's rotation with it, execute from that entity to run the tick function. For example, if I want to find Jeff's rotation here, I can simply run execute at E, type equals pig, name equals Jeff, function coder rot calc tick. Now we can't actually tell at this point what Jeff's rotation is or if the function even ran. What we need to do is display one of the scoreboards in the sidebar. So let's type scoreboard objectives set display sidebar krcrh. So that will show us Jeff's horizontal or left right rotation. That right there in the scoreboard is Jeff's score. However, if Jeff has turned since the last time we ran the command and it looks like he has, we'll need to run it again to update his horizontal rotation score. And that score we see now is Jeff's exact horizontal rotation in degrees. Again. The same exact function is used to get Jeff's vertical or up and down rotation. To see that, we need to display the other rotation scoreboard. So let's set it to RY. Not RY, RV, sorry. And it says here that Jeff's vertical rotation is zero, which is not looking up or down even slightly, which isn't entirely surprising as Jeff is generally uninterested in anything not at eye level. If we want to make sure we always have Jeff's exact rotation, we could use a repeating command block like this. But I prefer to add it to the start of my current game loop function like so. Now all we need to do to access Jeff's rotation is read his scores, KRCRH for his horizontal rotation and KRCRV for his vertical rotation. If at any point you decide you've had enough with this function and don't need it anymore, you can simply run the uninstall function like so. To get rid of the scoreboard objectives. Here we are in the new and improved explanation simulation, ready to learn about exactly how this system works. In this example, our player is rotated to, let's say, 322 degrees horizontally. The first thing we'll do 
is summon an area effect cloud which we'll use to calculate the player's rotation. The reason we calculate based off this area effect cloud rather than the player themselves is so we're not directly affecting the player through these commands. We also give it this unique tag so it can be targeted individually by the commands. Then we teleport the area effect cloud to the player so its rotation matches the player's. And now we can begin calculating that rotation. To do this, we run two commands. The first command adds 256 to the horizontal rotation score of the area effect cloud if it is rotated by at least 256 degrees horizontally. The second command will rotate the area effect cloud by negative 256 degrees horizontally, again, only if it is rotated at least 256 degrees. If the commands are red, which they're not in this case, that means the area effect cloud is not rotated by at least 256 degrees horizontally, so the selectors fail and the commands don't run. These two commands are then repeated with 128 degrees, which you can see has failed because of the red, as well as 64 degrees, which has succeeded, 32 degrees, which has failed, 16 degrees, which has failed, 8 degrees, which has again failed, 4 degrees, which has failed, 2 degrees, which has succeeded, and finally 1 degree, which in this case has failed. And you can see here the area effect cloud's rotation and score changed as each command ran, with the rotation getting closer to zero and the score getting closer to the player's rotation. And now the area effect cloud's rotation is completely zero and its score is exactly matching the player's rotation. So at this point, all we need to do is copy that score over to the player using a simple scoreboard operation. And now we see the player's score matches their rotation. Now for the vertical rotation, because of the way Minecraft handles vertical rotations, we need to tweak our approach for this just a little. Here we're running similar commands to those we used for the horizontal rotation, but instead of starting with 256 degrees, we're starting with just 64 degrees. Since the player's rotation can't be more than 90 degrees or looking straight down, there's no need to start above 64 degrees. One other argument we've added to the selector is that now these commands are checking for a maximum vertical rotation of 90 degrees. Why would we do that? Well, it turns out that negative vertical rotations are also interpreted as being between 270 and 360 degrees. So for example, this rotation here would also be interpreted as 335 degrees. So if we didn't check for a maximum of 90 degrees, then the negative rotations would be picked up as well, like this one here, and we would end up with a completely inaccurate rotation score. As with the previous commands, these ones will be red, and you can see they are here, if the command doesn't successfully target the area effect cloud, which in this case is what we want, because right now we're checking for positive vertical rotations or looking down. And again, we will repeat these commands with 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1 degrees, which have all failed because in this case, the player is looking upwards, so they'll have a negative rotation. And so we need to make sure we'll calculate these negative rotations as well. And to do that, we are pretty much just going to repeat the exact commands we just ran, instead using negative rotations and a minimum rotation of negative 90 degrees. Once again, the area effect cloud's score will slowly start to match the player's rotation. Now. So we'll copy that score again to the player using another scoreboard operation, like so. All the calculations are now done and the player's scores now match their rotation perfectly. So we can safely get rid of this area effect cloud. And that's it. That's all for this video guys, so thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials and command creations. Also leave a comment to let me know what you thought about the explanation simulation. Was it helpful? Should I use it again? Was it a complete waste of time? I'd love to know. And with that said, I'll see you next time. <laughs>